So good evening. Tonight we have two things for you. First of all, I want to explain a thing about the other video I posted today, which probably irritated quite a few viewers, which is the cartoon with the little horse and the monkey. And you have to have lived in Stuttgart uh, in the late 1960s until the Think sometimes in the mid 90s to understand and to appreciate that little cartoon. These cartoons were the fellow um, our local TV station used in the early evening hours, like from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in that range for the local news in between the different uh, commercials, between the different products. Uh, to put a buffer in there so you don't go from schnapps filled chocolate candy to uh, toilet bowl cleaner and then to um, you know your regular um, you know whatever they advertise for ladies lipstick or what have you that kind of stuff so between each commercial when we had a commercial block usually they would do a commercial block for three or four minutes they would put those little cartoons in between. And the people who worked for Mercedes-Benz or Bosch, my German viewers, they will understand the Swabian language. They will understand uh, what Unterdrückheimer Lemberger mit Hollinger means. And um, the reason why I put Kent in there is I'm trying to give him or get him the spirit of the place where this was all manufactured because we were the people who watched these little cartoons when we couldn't avoid not watching the um, commercials because it was just part of the thing. And um, so the Unterturkheimer Mittrollinger or Lemberger Mittrollinger was actually sold at the cafeterias between, you know, at Mercedes-Benz Besides wine, regular wine, they had Tolling and, and white wine too, uh, Riesling, I think it was. And they had beer available, so for those people who wanted to have an alcoholic beverage. That was not illegal in those years, and uh, people or the company would expect you not to get drunk. But it was very common for us to have a quarter liter of wine or a half a liter of beer uh, for lunch for most of us. And uh, we did do that. And the Unterturkheimer Wein Manufaktur is actually the uh, cooperative, the Unterturkheimer Wine Cooperative, Wine World Cooperative. They relabeled and rebranded this a few years ago um, to be more up to date. Now, what you saw, so that's so far to that video. If you didn't get the idea of why we posted this, well, it was primarily for those people, the viewers I have on the channel who are from Germany who are either currently working or former employees of Mercedes-Benz or Bosch and who are watching this channel too. Um, so they got the uh, appreciation out of it and the smiles, just to let you know. Now what we got here is the idle speed control valve from Jordan in Alabama. Jordan is the fellow who is converting his 1989 560SEL from the Continuous injection system from Bosch to Jetronic to e Jetronic over to a pulsed uh, electronic fuel injection system and he put up a channel and he's documenting on how he's doing this and I just wanted to show you this is his idle speed control valve manufacturing date is I looked it up with the magnifying glass is May of 1988 so this, he must have a early version between August, August uh, or September of 1988 to December of 1988. So an early version 560 SEL for the 89 model year. And on this one here, this thing is still sort of okay, but it is somewhat on its last leg. I'm gonna show you this here. We're gonna dial in one amp and we will see we still have plenty of light flowing through there. It's not even close to being closed. This is as close as I can zoom in. I will have to go up to 
Let's see where it actually fully closes here. 1.49 amps, 1.5 amps. But I won't release it now. It will not reopen until 800 milliamps, 800, 800, there we go. 790 milliamps, so it holds then continuously. So you can see this thing is pretty much on its last leg. Now it is fully open. And the, let me zoom out and you can see this, see this a little bit better here. So this is our traditional setup for this here. I can see if we can watch this again, you can see we're coming up to one amp. That's right here. And you can see the light shining through and then we're going up 1.2, 1.3. Not until about you reach 1.4 amps of 1.5 right there. This is when it actually closes, so that thing is pretty toast. It still has the cap on it, you can see it is not opening. Now it is at right around 800, 820 million. So he is having a lot of problems. And his disc in there, what we're watching, is starting to look like this here, where it is pretty chewed up. So that thing is really on its last leg. Let me turn this off, turn this off. So just that you can see the overall condition. I wrote the date of manufacturing of, which is this stamp here, which is hard to read. Let me see if I can actually zoom in on it. I have to hold it a little bit further out. You can see 88 and the, the dial is at five. So it was made in May of 1988. This is how old this is. So this is the first one he had in there. And then I found another surprise here. Let me go back out. We're going to go to the next topic, and that is our EHA valve, which I have already set up. But here I wanted to show you this here. As we know, is the two connectors have this interconnecting hose. And interestingly enough, you can see how bad this actually is. See if we can zoom in. See this? This is totally leaking here. There's no more resistance here on this here whatsoever this is this is a definitely early a vacuum leak here and then on the other side is this is the closed off one and this was used on the previous version it fits better in here but um, the seal on one side this one here is definitely gone so this is definitely a, a leak a pretty bad leak in the system you can see this how this wobbles and this is the wrong one the, the only place this was used was on the 500 and the 5 liter and 3.8 liter on the previous version. Not on this one here. They, these, this one here has the um, tube going through with the bypass air open, bypass valve. And what that prevents is when this thing ever closes fully, this allows some form of a bypass uh, of vacuum here to keep the fuel flow going. Because if you close this fully off, rapidly is then the, the uh, plate of the uh, airflow assembly metering unit is going to come up and cut off your airflow. So now we're going to go from this. So this is for Jordan. And um, I would like to thank Jordan for sending us all of this stuff. Otherwise, that wouldn't be possible. Here is my little diagram I made. Let me see if we have everything in here. I have already zoomed out so I have to bring this out a little bit so now we can actually see this this here is the EHA valve from his car I was not able to fully debunk this here of what that actually uh, when it was made and as we know is they, they cannot be easily taken apart uh, there is a fellow on bensworld.org which has actually cut this thing in half or cut it open and you can take a look at this on what that looks like it and the the main thing is what you have to watch out for is this is one of the very few polarized devices and you have pin number one and pin number two pin number two is the positive one which connects on your connector to pin number one because normally the pins, the connectors are attached this way. But we have this half rounded piece here with that uh, pin here. 
So you have to actually put it in inverted like this. And then your pin numbers from the connector and the uh, pin numbers here don't match. On my car, the, one of the people who worked on it inadvertently had thought that the cables were then swapped, but that's not the case. The black wire is the positive in this case, and the black brown one is the negative lead. And the ECU will reverse the polarity. And I'm gonna explain on how this works actually here in this diagram. The two holes in between these two holes here, this is where it attaches to the um, unit um, with the two O-rings to your fuel distributor. You have the microfilter side, which is, when you look at it this way, it's the left side. This is the one with the microfilter. Let me see if we can zoom in today. Better. Yeah, here we can see this very nicely. You can see what that there's an insert in it, and that is a microfilter mesh. And then you have just the out, the output side here. And that will go to the drain or to the um, to the return line to the tank, basically through the uh, fuel pressure regulator. The fuel comes in here, and in here is a restrictor. This is basically on the inside here. This is a schematic diagram. This is not what this looks like in there, but this is to explain the function. And this restrictor can be moved to the left or to the right. If I remove this restrictor, which is solid, and it has a sweat screw on here, which is this on top here, I can either move this in a, when it is not activated in a closer, close, more closed or more open position. If we move this to the closed position, we are restricting the fuel flow. If the fuel flow is restricted, then the mixture will be leaner. If we open this up, then the fuel flow is greater through this unit and we have a enrichment process. So with this here, and we do this, or the ECU does it, the center position is zero milliamps. And at zero milliamps, you usually can regulate this in when these units are built. They're calibrated through a particular drop here or restriction. And that is set up with that set screw. And that will give you that 0 0.4 bar drop between system pressure and uh, the uh, lower pressure on the uh, lower chamber pressure or working pressure, what we call that. Um, here we can see on basically how you would hook up your meter in here is if you were to measure that your amp meter is hooked up with the plus pole to the black wire which in this case is this one here if we're looking from the top it's the this one here the black one if it is mounted on here like this is the inner one the one which is closer to the fuel distributor and the brown black one is the outer one that's how you can easily identify this if they're connected correctly. You may want to check and do the continuity check between here and the 40 or 20 pin connector on your ECU when you unplug the ECU on terminal number 12 for black. So 12 should wind up here and terminal number 10 should wind up here on this pin. This way you know that they are correctly connected on the ECU side, not that someone swapped it. Over the years, so many people have worked on these cars and some people have done a whole bunch of stuff. And if this thing will work backwards, you're never gonna get your um, uh, pressure situation correctly or the mixture correctly. And never mind the uh, closed loop lambda, you know, adjustments of 50-50. What you're trying to get to is if this is not polarized correctly, if the polarity is, is uh, reversed. Um, so we're measuring here. So a regular current flow of a positive indication in a digital meter will indicate up to 75 milliamps. We're going open in a rich direction. And if we, when the ECU inverts it, you will read a negative number here and we will be closing it. Now, um, the breakout cable, basically, if you were to build one, you would need two of the, one more extra, no, one, two. 
you will need two of these type of connectors, which are the female ones. Uh, if I can get it off now, here it comes. Two of these more. This one here is this one, basically, since it is connected to the ECU. You will need one of these mating male connectors and two females, one to plug in your meter, and the other one goes in here. That is basically what the cable for Mercedes-Benz looks like. That is the breakout cable, Mercedes-Benz part number 102-589-046300, or you can make it yourself. Uh, as simple as that, black goes to one, one, here the polarity is correct, here it switches, okay, just that you remember that, and black is always the one which is closer to your fuel distributor, that's the easiest way to remember that, if the black one goes indeed to number 12, terminal number 12 on the ECU connector, and uh, here, this is uh, section point. 07.3121 for every car we have this is the section you need to look up for your particular model and the most important one here is the current output this is in milliamps here and we're starting with the ignition on we have 75 milliamps going through according to this wiring diagram here and that will open it up so you have full fuel enrichment immediately as soon as you turn the ignition on. Then at 20 degrees, and that is really important for those folks who want to adjust and calibrate their um, fuel distributors, is you have to basically, when you do the fuel distributor calibration, you have to have a known good unit which has exactly a 0 0.4 drop here. And that 0 0.4 bar drop is at zero milliamps of current, basically the thing disconnected. And this has to be happening at a level of 20 degrees Celsius because that is the temperature at which the fuel distributors have to be calibrated with the adjustment screw for the output, fuel output. And on this particular model I have, that would be four milliliter at idle speed uh, displacement of volume, basically. In uh, in America, we would say 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but you could use 70, 70 and 20 in a fairly climate controlled environment. The reason for this is that if you may have seen this in the other videos with the rotor meters, is that the meters are calibrated and they're calibrated, for instance, for water. H2O, and that is distilled water, which doesn't have any minerals or salt in it. And it is done at 20 degrees. Uh, we know, if you, you may know, if you remember that from high school, is that water, pure water, has its highest weight, or uh, the biggest gravity, is at four degrees Celsius. As soon as the water gets either colder or warmer, it will be heavier. And it will float on top of the four degree cold water. That's why your fish usually go to the lowest spot in the lake to go make it through the winter. And fuel, again, has about, is lighter than water, especially distilled water, by about a factor of uh, 0.7. So if one liter of water, uh, H2O, distilled with, with no impurities, uh, weighs exactly one kilogram or 1,000 grams. 1,000 milliliters of water, which is one liter water, weighs 1,000 grams at four degrees Celsius. At 20 degrees, the weight will be slightly less, but here we have to compare this to four degrees. So you would have to look up the weight of fuel at four degrees Celsius, or you can take the weight of water at 20 degrees Celsius and the weight of uh, fuel, of the particular fuel we're looking at. And that is usually 70%. It can vary between 63 to 78%. So you have to look at the material safety data sheet of the fuel you're using to do the calibration. Then you will do it and uh, know it. And in that material safety data sheet, it will give you the specific gravity at 20 degrees Celsius. And then we can actually adjust or read the meter correctly, these rotor meters, 
the mechanical ones. Then we have now determined the exact spe specific gravity of the fluids involved. And for this, we have to put a known um, EHA valve on there, which has been calibrated at the factory to the correct drop at 20 degrees Celsius and zero milliamp currents. Zero milliamp current means this unit here is disconnected from any type of power source, but it is attached to the fuel distributor with O-ring and everything, and you have fuel going through it. The way you can do this is, um, I would have to see if I can get the calibration um, adjustments for this here on, on how much pressure or fuel you have to actually apply and what has to come out on the other side on what the drop has to be exactly, but I believe it is 0.4. So you could use two bars, for instance, 2.4 bars on the input side here, and you should have two bars coming out, and you can do this by adjusting this here without anything being attached here. That is the main uh, idea behind it, because when the unit goes to 50-50, um, it will regulate this either leaner or uh, they say the reading fluctates. At deceleration fuel cutoff, we're going straight to minus 60 milliamps. That is when you take the foot off the accelerator and your throttle position, position switch closes. The contact or the switch on the throttle itself closes to closed or idle speed. This thing will drop almost instantaneously to minus 60, cutting off the fuel going through here. Full load enrichment is 4 to 6 milliamps. Acceleration enrichment is smaller than 20 amps. It's milliamps. And uh, post-start enrichment, this is when you're going from 50 to 70 degrees, 80 degrees is between 5 to 9. Uh, and then again, you have at coolant temperature, when it reaches 80 degrees Celsius, you're going to be back at zero. So it goes from zero to five to nine milliamps and then the zero and then it hovers around plus minus three milliamps. And that is approximately your part load mixture adaption. This is when we're checking uh, between idle speed, the, that is then your, um, what do we call it? The uh, lambda control, basically your duty cycle adjustment is in these two ranges here fluctuating. And this is where the other manuals basically take over. Um, but if this here is inverted, then your enrichment process is going to be too lean because it would be minus 5 to minus 9 million. The acceleration enrichment is too lean because you would go down to minus 20. And here this would be flipped around. When you need actually richer, it would be leaner and the computer basically gets confused. This can cause a lot of problems. So make sure that your number 2 lead, number 2 on EHA valve, not, which is number one on this connector, goes to number 12 on the ECU, and this one goes to number 10 on the ECU. And just to make sure, I told you that the right way I showed it, we wanna double check this. 10 is brown, black, is pin number two, or terminal number two on the connector, and it is number one on the EHA valve. Number two on the EHA valve is number one on the connector here, and it goes over the black wire to pin number 12. This is one of the most important critical check when you get a new car, which has an EHA valve that I would do on any model, make or model, whether it's a Rolls Royce, Bentley, Ferrari, Porsche, BMW, whoever uh, it might be, make sure that your EHA valve is polarized correctly, not that some Yahoo uh, came in and swapped them because he thought that they were connected wrong because especially on this car here since it says one here but it winds up on two here and one winds up on two number here so that's the part of the confusion and with that in Swabian the horse and the monkey are called Sefle uns Pferdle und die sagen jetzt gut Nacht a good Nächtle gell? Bis zum nächsten Mal.